What's shaking, writers? Welcome back to another video. My name's Cam. Uh, welcome back to another pretty chill, unscripted, just chat video uh, about writing. I'm still hard at work on my episodic fantasy series, but uh, in the meantime, I thought I would have a bit of a bit of a fun chat about uh, genres, just writing genres, the genres that I would love to write or have loved writing, and the genres that I have hated writing or would hate to write. Not necessarily genres that I love and hate reading. I'm sure it goes without saying that writing in different genres is an extremely, insanely different experience. A lot more than you would think if you haven't tried it before. I've written in uh, quite a few uh, genres I haven't even published or anything like that, and it's just been wildly different. It's been a completely different experience, not just in how it makes you feel, but in how you have to approach it almost from the ground floor, in the ways that you outline it, the ways you even uh, just brainstorm for it, the preparation, obviously the writing itself. There's a whole uh, just there's a whole storm of variables that come into effect when you're writing different genres that can greatly impact how you feel about that experience. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, let's start with the genres that I love writing. Obviously, I'm going to start with fantasy because that's the one I'm writing right now, and I think arguably it has always been my favorite to write. There is no other genre uh, that I've written within that has let me feel as creative as I do when I'm writing fantasy, especially uh, with the story I'm writing now. It's the first time I've created a completely fictional world, and it's just been fun. Like, fun is just the word I would use. Unfortunately, as passionate as we can get about writing and as much as we can love it, sometimes it's just not fun. A lot of the time, uh, it's not fun, even if you think you're creating something that you are really proud of. But when it comes to fantasy, almost every part of it is fun. Uh, coming up with world, cultures, monsters is one of the funnest things about it, I think. Deciding uh, what your characters are going to be like because you can make them so wacky, you can have them just completely batshit crazy, to be honest. They don't need to exist in a real world that makes uh, complete sense. You make the rules, so you can really just go wild with it. Deciding on the magic you want to use, how it's going to work, is it soft or hard magic? Fantasy, more than most other genres, will result in a much longer story, so it can be a lot more work. Hasn't really been an issue for me so far because, again, I'm writing shorter episodic fantasy. I don't want you to confuse me saying it's fun with me saying it's easy. <laughs> Moving on, horror. Horror is one of the genres that can be fun to write if you're, if you're getting a bit wacky with it, you know, but I guess it depends because the thing with horror is that there are a lot of sub-genres of horror and it can go in a lot of different ways. You could be writing a straight up campfire, slasher, monster, creature, cryptid, whatever, or you could be writing a more uh, psychological kind of horror. And I'll say right now, writing psychological horror was very rarely fun. I don't think I ever had fun doing it. And I'm not saying that as a negative so much. I think that's something that just comes with it. It shouldn't really be fun, I guess. I wrote a psychological horror book and uh, because I wanted to approach it as truthfully as I could, even though that character was living out something that I have never lived out. I wasn't going like full Jared Leto method actor or anything like that, um, but I was kind of letting myself get into a very dark kind of mindset. And although it, I personally think it worked really well for the writing uh, and for the story, it wasn't fun, you know? But horror can be fun, uh, especially, and this is the biggest plus with horror, this is the main reason I love writing horror, is because I think it is the best genre for writing short stories, and I love writing short stories. I think uh, horror short stories are where you can get as creative as you want because it's such a short commitment from the reader. They, they don't really need to suspend their disbelief for too long, you can just get super wacky with it. This one might surprise you, uh, because I've never put out a story in this genre, and I don't know if I ever would, but I think one day I would like to, once I am a much better writer, because I feel like I would need to be. It's contemporary, uh, so not necessarily romance, more so just a story about a real-life kind of experience. 
maybe like you could describe it as a drama, although it could be very light and comedic in tone. I'm even struggling to describe what I'm trying to talk about here, but I would love to write a contemporary that is just probably short uh, and not too serious, just about someone having a very real life experience that a lot of people can relate with. Uh, one of my favorite books, uh, contemporary, called Waiting for Doggo, and it's uh, there is a little bit of romance in there, but the most plot light uh, kind of book I think I've ever read, and yet it's still one of my favorites just because it's so comforting. Uh, basically, Waiting for Doggo is just about this guy who uh, breaks up with his girlfriend or whatever, and she leaves behind this ugly little rabid dog that doesn't like anyone, and he hates the dog. Um, and the story is basically about him going through a real career kind of uh, downfall while trying to care for this just vicious little animal and as the story goes on him and the animal actually end up forming a real bond and growing attached and it's just the sweetest sweetest thing in the world and uh, I would like to write something like that one day uh, something that has such a simple not boring but just like kind of vanilla relatable plot that people can just read and put down and move on with you know anyway Comics and graphic novels are something I've always wanted wanted to get into. I've always thought about it, and I have actually a lot of ideas that I think would be great comics and graphic novels, but unfortunately, uh, the unattainable part of it is how insanely expensive it, it would be to have an illustrator to work with on those. And I'm not saying illustrators are unnecessarily expensive. I think they should be expensive uh, for what they're providing you. Uh, I should clarify, if I did... I think it wouldn't be like superhero comics or anything like that. I, th I think I would prefer to write something that's more like a dark drama kind of uh, comic or graphic novel series. Not necessarily like fantastical or anything like that, just kind of like a, a dark, realistic drama. I think that would be cool. <laughs> Children's. I would, I would love to write a children's book one day, and in fact, I plan to, uh, although you'll probably never hear about it because it w I don't want to write one for the sake of publishing it and making money or anything like that. I want to write one because I have two nieces uh, that I adore and I want to give them something kind of timeless. And I'm like, you know, I'm a writer, so maybe, <laughs> maybe writing a little book for them would be the best bet. Again, this involves an illustrator, but the beauty of children's books is that there's like, I don't know, 20 pages or something like that. So you can get away with spending a lot less. As far as coming up with an idea goes, I would probably just try to personalize it as much as I can to them. Those are the genres I love or would love to write in. Uh, let's move on to the ones I hate, starting with mystery slash crime slash thriller. So the thing is, I, I do actually want to write a mystery book or a crime, a thriller, whatever. I want to write one. Uh, but I hate writing in this genre because it is so insanely difficult. Um, a, a couple of years ago for a NaNoWriMo, I thought I would try my hand at writing a mystery, basically about a group of kids. It was kind of like a Stranger Things thing, uh, but said in the 70s about a group of kids that stumble across a, a serial killer uh, kind of situation. And trying to plot it out in a way that is not just entertaining, but in a way that makes sense is so insanely difficult because you don't just set up a mystery, right? And then have it resolved. That's that's not the way mystery works, at least anymore. Uh, you have to have uh, red herrings, false leads, all this kind of stuff that will have the reader think they are figuring out what's happening and then you have to twist it in some way. That's the really difficult part. Keeping in mind, you still have to resolve the story in a way that makes the reader go, ah, because you can't just throw in an ending where they could have never seen it coming. Like it wasn't physically possible for them to figure it out because you never gave them the information to figure it out. They need to have all of the clues there to figure it out while still leading them in a different direction. It's just, it's a whole, it's a whole thing. Um, that's basically why I <laughs> gave up on that story. Romance. Um, I don't really have any interest in writing a explicitly romance story. I just don't. I, I don't know what else to say. 
Uh, this includes like, you know, erotica, all that kind of stuff. Someone out there who's been watching this channel long enough is going to bring up the fact that I've technically written an erotica story before. Don't ask. That was a goof. I, I, I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't seriously write a romance that I would want to attach my actual name to. Not because I hate the genre or anything like that, or because I'm embarrassed by it or anything like that. It's just, it's just not my thing. You know, I just, yeah, most of the time I find it kind of boring. Sci-fi. So I actually have an idea for a sci-fi book. It's just an idea that came to me one day and I noted it down and everything, but a huge part of me just isn't into sci-fi. I was never really a Star Wars guy. I, I don't know, like it doesn't excite me thinking about like space battles and <laughs> spaceships, all that kind of stuff. It, it just doesn't hit the sweet spot for me. I think Doctor Who is about as close as I ever got. I, I love Doctor Who. Non-fiction. Um, I, the idea of writing a non-fiction kind of horrifies me. That's kind of like the mystery thing. Um, I have a lot of respect for the people that do write it. I just don't think I could ever do it because having to take true things and write it respectfully in a way that is entertaining sounds so stressful. There is a lot of potential there to disrespect real people that have real stakes in what you're writing about. And uh, yeah, not really for me. As far as reading goes, I do enjoy some nonfiction from time to time. Most of the nonfiction I've read is, I have a bunch of books down there uh, of like banned books. I've read a lot of like banned books like Led Zeppelin, uh, Guns N' Roses and all that kind of stuff. YA, again, something else that I have technically written before. I've done, a, if you want to watch the video, I'll leave a card up here, but I did a whole video about an urban fantasy YA series I did write and publish two books in years and years ago when I was much younger um, and much more naive. It's just something I've drifted away from. I don't hate it or anything like that. Again, I'm, I'm fine with it existing and I'll even enjoy a YA book from time to time. But a lot of the stories I think about when it comes to YA, I would rather just write with the freedom of adult, being able to just completely take uh, the seatbelt off and just go nuts with it and go in any direction without having to worry about like, oh, is this, is this going to push it outside of the young adult market, that kind of thing. <music> Last but not least, uh, the one I hate and the one I actually have, maybe <laughs> I'll even throw some shade and say dis disrespect for is self-help or how-to books. Until such a time that I am qualified enough to provide uh, insight on something that people aren't already providing extensive and free insight on, I don't think I have any place writing self-help or how-tos, and I think a lot of the people who do write self-help or how-tos probably don't ha have a place to be doing that either. Uh, in particular, like finance how-to books, basically the pyramid scheme, like how to's, how to get rich kind of stuff. And you look into it and the reason the person is rich to begin with is because they're selling how to get rich courses and books, etc. It's a chicken in the egg situation of bullshit. And again, I'm not getting into like beef or drama or anything like that. Uh, but it just seems to me like a lot of people uh, will do something long enough and then assume that they are qualified enough to be an educator. Because if you're writing a self-help or a how-to, you are taking on the role of an educator. And I think in that case, you need to really ask yourself, should I be an educator? If your plan is to write a self-help book about you know, being your best self and you go ahead and fill it with vague platitudes like believe in yourself, etc., etc., that people have already been saying for 150 years, then just don't. Just don't. Don't do it. Just don't. You're ripping people off. That's all it is. Unless you have something unique to provide, uh, something new to provide, then just don't. I think more often than not, it's people out for a buck. In the worst cases, it's people taking advantage of people that are in the worst situation to be doing this, you know? Like people who are poor, spending all their money on courses and books on how to make more money and getting plates of dog shit in return. I wanna get something really clear. Uh, not all self-help or how-tos are bad. There is a lot of really, really 
good uh, self-help and how-tos out there, especially how-tos. I love writing craft books and courses, assuming that they come from people who are qualified educators. I can confidently say that I think I am a much better writer today than I was when I was younger and more naive because of these uh, how-tos. And when it comes to self-help, there's a lot of self-help uh, stuff out there that has genuinely helped people with genuinely insightful and valuable information or advice. And I think that's great. And I even think it's fine that they charge people for it. I'm just talking about the bullshit. You know what I'm talking about. I don't know why I'm spelling it out so clearly. You're not babies. You know what I'm talking about. There is, there's a lot of garbage out there and I don't think I would ever want to contribute to it. That's all. Anyway, uh, there it is. I kind of rambled on there. That's what happens when I don't script my videos. Sorry about that. But uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Let me know which uh, genres you would love or hate to write in or would never write in. Thank you so much for watching, especially for watching through the whole video. I appreciate you. Good luck with the writing and I'll see you in the next one. Catch ya.